Hello everybody, you are looking at Newton's acceleration equations. I wanted you to have a chance to see how one can come up with these equations based on some pretty simple ideas. To remind you about the chart, any of these equations is going to contain four of five possible variables. The possible variables are acceleration, final velocity, initial velocity, delta d, and time. Delta d being the displacement. There are five variables. Each equation only contains four of them. So it should make sense that there should be five equations, each equation missing one of the variables. Now, for reasons that I can't explain, this is the one that usually gets left out when people talk about Newton's four acceleration equations. But I want to show you that it's equally valid, and maybe I even want to make a push that we should get it into the mix. Anyways, enough yapping. Let's go take a look here at the actual premise for these different equations. They all start with the same premise, which is you're going to have a situation where you have a, a velocity that is changing at a constant rate. And if it's changing at a constant rate, that means that it has a constant acceleration. So that's what this set of equations is designed for. From here, you can pick a couple spots on this particular line and you can start looking at it in more detail. Call this two different times. And so there's going to be some initial time, ti, that starts things off. And at some final time, t final, we would end over there. At the initial time, there was an initial velocity, whatever that number is. And at the final time, there's a final velocity, whatever that number is. From there, you take two of the most powerful ideas from calculus. And you say that two things that I might be very interested in. First, the slope of the line. The slope, remember, is the rise over the run. So I have slope is equal to a rise over a run. So a change in y, delta y over delta x, which for me is really going to be a delta v over a delta t. I'm getting that because notice that my y direction is all about velocity that's over here. And my x direction is all about time. If we come back over here, I'll remind you that a delta in science means final minus initial. So delta v is truly equal to a v final minus a v initial. And if you come look at what that means over here, is you had a final velocity that you obtained after you were at this initial velocity here. And so going this particular height, that is my delta v. Likewise, the change between here and here is a delta t parameter. Now, in the equations as I've shown them, I've dropped the delta out of the equations. Hopefully that's not a point of confusion for anybody. Basically, as far as the equation is concerned, you always come back and you say, you know what, let's let t initial uh, be zero so that I have t final minus t initial is equal to just plain t because you said that that was a zero right there. And so instead of using delta t, I'm just going to use a t by itself. And I know for the purposes of my drawing that I have over here, I'm kind of implying that t initial is some non-zero number, but the derivation works the same either way. At any rate, I'm going to come back over here to this particular definition where if you just look at the slope of a velocity versus time graph like we have here in the middle, we define that as acceleration. So really, here is the most fundamental acceleration equation that we have. We have A is equal to delta V over delta T. If I break out that delta V up top, I'm going to have V final minus V initial. And if I get rid of this delta in the bottom, like I said I was going to, then I just have a T. And that allows me to actually rewrite this equation with just a little bit of algebra as V final is equal to V initial plus acceleration times time. So there's one of our starting points. If we come back to this diagram, what I've done is I've just kind of laid out this particular equation. That's one of the primary fundamental ones. And for the sake of discussion, I'm going to call that equation 1, even though it's not listed in order here. So coming back to this, I've cleaned it up a little bit. Basically what I've just done is, like I said, we've defined a constant acceleration, which is really what Newton's acceleration equations are defined for. Constant acceleration. So I'm just describing the slope of that blue line with this red horizontal line I just put there, some positive value. One of the other fundamental principles from calculus is to look at the area under the curve, so the integral. 
What I'm going to do for the purposes of this kind of algebraic derivation is I'm going to break this area under the curve up into two simple shapes. I have a triangle and I have a rectangle. The area for this rectangle is going to be just the base, the width, times the height, which means that this area here, the base we have is ti to t final. Again, remember that really is a delta t, even though when I write the equations I drop out the delta. I'll leave in the delta for just a second. So the base is a delta t, and then I need to multiply it by the height, which is vi. Okay, so that's the area of that one. Let's come in here and let's look at what the area is of this particular triangle. And so for this guy, the area of the triangle is one half base times height because it only gets half the amount since it's a triangle. And so for this one, the area of that triangle is one half, the base is delta t, and the height is interestingly v final minus v initial. So I can't just say it's v final, that doesn't work. It's also not v initial, it's the difference of those two things. Technically a delta v. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that total area is going to be equal to the red area plus the blue area. And what the area under the curve of a velocity time graph actually tells us is a displacement. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say the displacement, which is the combined area, is equal to delta t times vi, that was the red area, plus one half delta t times v final minus v initial. Clear a little space. And now we're just going to simplify, and I'm also going to drop the delta in front of the t. So I have delta d is equal to v initial times time, so I swapped the order of those two terms, plus, and now I need to distribute the one half t into each of these other terms in parentheses here, one half v final t minus one half v initial t. This term will combine with this term here. I have a negative half vit and a full vit out on the left side. These two terms will combine to a positive one half vi times time. And then I still need to grab this guy and let's put it out in front here. So there's a one half v final times time. And that was all equal to delta d. So now what I'll do is I'll factor out a one-half and the time from both of these terms, and it looks like this. Delta D is equal to one-half V initial plus V final, so I switched the order of those, times time. As a side note, you'll also notice that you could have just done the area of a trapezoid where it's the average height times the width. Same result. So now you're looking at equation two right there. From here, all you do is you start plugging one equation into the other one for certain variables. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug equation one into equation two for particular variables. The first one I'll show you is I will put a vi at in for this term right here. So that will go away and it will just become a vi plus at. Okay, I've cleared some space and now like I alluded to, what I'm going to do is instead of having that be a V final term, I'm going to write in V I plus A T, which I'm getting from equation one. So I'm substituting equation one into equation two through V final. So when I do that, I have delta D is equal to one half V initial plus, I'll put this in parentheses so it's easy to see, V initial plus A T multiplied by time. You can see that this is immediately going to become the equation that does not have v final in it. That's going to be the missing variable. So delta d is equal to one half. These two terms will combine and I will have two vi plus a t times time. Now I just need to distribute the one half into both terms and the t into both terms. Delta d is equal to the one half cancels the two v i t plus one half a t squared. There's one of them. So we just found this one. 
This one is going to be our fourth. You can see it looks really similar. There's a minus sign here, whereas it was a plus sign above, and then it's a VF instead of a VI there. So this fourth one, this is the one I always think gets neglected for some reason. I'm going to rearrange equation one to look like this. V initial is going to be equal to V final minus AT. And this quantity is going to get plugged in for VI. And so you can see this next one is the one that VI will not make an appearance. Delta D is equal to one half V final minus AT plus V final multiplied by time. Very similar process. This term and this term will combine to be a 2VF. Then I will distribute in. So delta D is equal to 1 half 2VF minus AT times T. Then distribute delta D is equal to V final time minus 1 half AT squared. So that's the fourth one which again was right here. And so last, we just got to come up with this one. Hopefully at this point it's no surprise to you. What we're going to do is we're going to solve equation one for time and then we're going to plug that in. So equation one, solve for time, is going to look like this. Time is going to be equal to V final minus V initial over acceleration. This quantity will get plugged in for time. Delta D is equal to one half V initial plus V final times V final minus V initial divided by acceleration. So this A and that two right there are in a denominator. So let's go ahead and put them on the other side way over here so that we can get them out of the way. So I have two A delta D is equal to I'm going to swap the order of these terms. V final plus V initial multiplied by V final minus V initial. This is one of those nice places that when you do FOIL, that middle term is going to cancel. Nonetheless, let's do all the combinations here. So we're going to do the full shebang of FOIL first and then inside, outside, last, that whole thing. Maybe your math teachers didn't use that. 2A delta D is equal to V final squared. I'll do the insides, that's VI and VF plus VI, VF. The outsides here and here is going to be minus a VI, VF. Now the lasts, notice the minus sign is still sitting there, that's really important. So I have a minus V initial squared. Notice these two middle terms are equal in size but opposite in sign so they cancel each other. So I just have this term and this term left on the right. I'm going to come up here and rewrite it one last step. V final squared, so I'm putting this term on the left, is equal to, then I'm going to say this term but I'm going to put it on the other side. So now it's a positive. V initial squared and then plus 2A delta D was still sitting around. And so there we go. So you can see that's how we came up with that last one there. So I don't know, it's kind of useful to be able to see the way that you come up with these equations since you're going to just sit there and use them all the time. From this, hopefully you can identify that all of these equations are coming from the idea of using slope for acceleration from a velocity time graph and the area under the curve is something about displacement. You combine those ideas and that's how you come up with those last three. That's all I got for you right now and if this made sense to you, go ahead and let your computer know.